Hi, this is Chris Hoy. Thank you for joining me on Create with Chris. Door hangers are top of the list for popular home decor projects. I have been having so much fun painting these new multi-piece welcome signs. Today I will be showing you how to paint this fun turkey using simple touches of paint to create amazing results. It's quick and easy using my unique tips, tricks, and techniques. Whether you are a beginner or painting for fun, grab your brushes and let's get started. I'm giving this quick 12 piece set a base coat of multi-purpose sealer and then a top coat of light buttermilk. Using my oval wash, I'm just slip slapping some color on, marigold, burnt sienna, and raw sienna, blending them together but letting it show movement. The turkey body and face is toffee. And I'm just going to go around the edge with a little bit of raw sienna to shade the outer edges and give it a little bit of dimension using my half inch awesome angle. The little part at the bottom I believe is supposed to be his chest but it looked like a pumpkin to me so I'm base coating it marigold, top coating it with warm sunset. And I am using a number eight, 10 filbert which is the perfect size for that shape of pumpkin. Going back to the beak and the wattle, base coating that with marigold using that same Filbert, I am adding some tangerine segments in the pumpkin. When, we shade, when I shade it, it's going to blend all together. Adding a little bit of raw sienna on the bottom and the right side of the beak to give a little bit of shading on there. Drop down to my quarter inch awesome angle. Highlighted the top left with banana cream. You just use the same brush to top coat that wattle country red and put a little bit of warm sunset on that beak just to make it a little more orange. With the same quarter inch awesome angle, I'm adding the shading in the valleys between the segments, blending it in. It just uh, blends with that tangerine beautifully. Adding a little bit of tangerine highlight on the waddle and then I brighten it up just a bit with uh, like buttermilk and then added some light buttermilk on the beak on the top left. Going back to the pumpkin, I use my dry brush to just add a uh, little bit of snow white highlight on there and just ramp it up on the beak and the waddle as well. And if it gets too pinkish, just go back and touch it up with a little bit of country red. Now the eyes are inscribed on the piece, but I found out they were the same size as my painter's pal. So I just used soft black to stencil those in, adding a little bit of highlight on the bottom and the right side with Snow White, and then adding dip dots on the eyes to uh, add a little bit of highlight. And I added the nostrils on the beak with soft black using my stylus. With my uh, stencil brush, I am dry brushing the cheeks, country red, until they're, I do both of them at the same time so they build the intensity at the same time. Loading my Epic Script Liner with Soft Black to create the eyelashes and the eyebrows. Make sure you have enough moisture on the brush to really get nice smooth lines. A few little dip dots on the cheeks just adds a little bit of sparkle and twinkle to brighten his face up and really pull those highlights together. Now I want to add all those features so they're not just on top of his face. So I'm going with my eighth inch awesome angle, a little bit of burnt sienna to shade around the eyes and really set them in. I am base coating the uh, stem of the pumpkin very, very lightly with thinned raw sienna and that will show me exactly where the stem goes. Now I'm going back with my Epic Script Liner and a little bit of thinned burnt umber to line those ridges in. Very loose, very flowing. Um, and the same thing with a little bit of light buttermilk to add some highlights, mostly on the top and the left side. Just very loose, very light because it, by the time all the layers are added on, it just really begins to kind of blend together really well. Adding some burnt umber shading at the base of the stem. 
wasn't real sure what I was going to do with the feathers, so I thought I would just kind of play around a little bit. I base coated them with banana cream and then went back with tangerine. I wanted them to be very bright and just put two layers on there and they were perfect. Took my Epic Script Liner with a little bit of warm sunset and kind of floated those uh, ridges in for the quills and just very lightly. I loaded my incredible comb with country red, started at the center and just pulled it out. And I did all of the sections just like that. It took, took a fair amount of time, but I cut that part out so we could move along. And then I went back with banana cream from the outside in to get a little bit of brightness on those. Going back now with some country red, and I'm deepening those areas down the center and kind of in between where those ridges are just to really brighten those up and give some more dimension. I like the way that looked. It was leaning more toward the color I wanted. And I did that on each of them, mostly at the base and down the center, and then pull a little bit up toward the top. I did this in several layers. I didn't just do one and then that was it. I wanted to go back and build that intensity and pay attention to where the feathers are placed. Now going back to the background, I wanted to work on that while the feathers were drying. Around the outer edge, I am just deepening the shading with a little bit of burnt umber. I knew I wanted to stencil the background, but I wanted to make sure where placement was, so I positioned the turkey on there so I could see how it was going to, to work out because not all of the background is going to be covered with one part of the stencil. I have to use it in sections. This is a brand new stencil. I absolutely love it. Bloated my number six spectacular stencil brush with burnt umber. Wipe it on a paper towel to remove most of the paint and then I'm just very lightly dry brushing the design on there and I'm putting the stencil at different angles. I wasn't real sure in the background. I had planned on using a palette knife but it just didn't look good. So I misted the surface pretty good with water and used a damp sea sponge with burnt umber to tap around the outer edges. And by misting it and keep and tapping over it, it just becomes very muted. Almost looks like old parchment. While it was still very wet, I splattered it with burnt umber and the little speckles will, with all the moisture, begin to diffuse and you, it just becomes very aged and very interesting. You can see how soft that sponging is and how soft. I decided to highlight the tips of the feathers with a little bit of light buttermilk and I put them together so I could see exactly where the highlights needed to be. The lettering uses the same colors that I used on the feathers. A nice base coat and I'm using my number two radical round. It's just perfect for the lettering. Banana cream. After that is dry then I add a little bit of tangerine on the top. I want it to go from light to the deeper color, darkening it down with the warm sunset and blending those together very softly, going in with country red to bring that richness down towards the bottom. And I did do two coats on that. The center branch is burnt umber and then I'm using my number 10 filbert to base coat those leaves on there with Hauser light green. Loaded the toe of my quarter inch awesome angle with plantation pine to base coat the bottom and the base of or to float shade the base and the bottom side of the leaves. And these are going to have a lot of different layers of color and they're going to look absolutely fantastic. So allow this to be very loose and very free flowing. By the time all the colors are added, it's just going to look beautiful. The berries need to be very bright. 
they I'm using my painter's pal and spectacular stencil brush to stencil them with marigold and I'm using two different sizes of the uh, circles so that the berries aren't all samey samey once those are dry I'm going back with the same stencil and I'm top coating each one of those with warm sunset and it really brightens them up by having that marigold base underneath of it. Make sure when you use the stencil brush to wipe the excess paint off so you don't have any run unders on the stencil. Going back with my quarter inch awesome angle to shade the berries with country red. Look how pretty they become. Just a really light shade and if two coats are needed by all means go back and add that second coat. Use my Epic Script Liner to connect the leaves to the center stem with Burnt Umber. Now I'm going back with some soft black, not only to deepen the center branch, but also using that color to connect the berries. Using my stylus to add a Snow White comma stroke, such a simple tool to add a perfect comma stroke. It works great every time. To this is the color I get most excited about aqua sky adding this little unexpected color on the shaded areas of the leaves and the berries just really ramps it up a notch and just adds such a beautiful glow and I not only shade the leaves but I'm using my epic script liner to add some highlights on the branches anywhere it looks dull and you can see what a huge difference this makes between all these layers of colors these leaves really start to resonate and glow and stand out adding some more highlights with that aqua sky what a huge difference a little bit of paint makes and i say that over and over i think that's my motto a little bit of paint makes a big difference Look at these leaves now, adding some celery shoot as a highlight. And I, there's nothing else you need to add. These just look fantastic. I love how they're, they turned out. Because I put the green on the leaves in the background, I thought the pumpkin needed to have a leaf added on it as well. Same colors, I just made the edges a little bit ragged because pumpkins are that way adding some aqua sky in the shaded areas and on the vine those are soft black with a little bit of that aqua sky and some snow white highlights make sure everything's dry adding the plantation pine to give some shading to that leaf a little bit of celery shoot to give some dimension and brightening up the highlights a, on the stem with Snow White to really make it stand out. A little bit of shadow underneath the leaf. Now to get everything in place, arranging everything on the plaque, make sure that I don't have any areas that are not in need of paint. And I do use quick grip adhesive to glue everything down. I did decide to put just a hint of aqua sky on that highlight on the feathers just a hint not much and a little bit on that leaf as well i added some country red dip dots on the lettering with a little tiny tangerine highlight in the center once everything was in glued in place i decided that i needed that one more thing i was so excited i was playing around i wanted to put a little tiny border trim around the outside edge and you know how hard it is to do a little skinny line I found out that if I slide my palette knife through the paint and just edge it, I get a perfect little stripe on the top edge. Keep it about a 45 degree angle. And then I always, if I finish my side edges, I use my finger. Same thing, same concept as using a brush. Don't overload it. If it takes two coats with a brush, it takes two coats with your finger. If it's dry and starts to drag, Pick a little moisture up on your finger, a little bit of water. Gently slide it. You don't want to push too hard. Looks perfect. I decided to add a little bit of edging on the side of the letters. I just did the left side. I wish I would have done it before I glued them on. 
would have made it a lot easier, but just adding that hint of aqua sky finishes it off perfectly. After everything is dry, seal completely with varnish of choice. I did speed up the video and took out some of the dry time and second coats, but in real time it took about an hour and a half to paint. I love how it turned out and hope you give it a try. I hope you learned some new tips, tricks, and techniques. I know I did. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. I would love to hear from you. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss out on upcoming videos. Remember, a little bit of paint makes a big difference. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to our next painting adventure together.